Okay, so this is an attempt at a very simple explanation of what DNS requests are and how your ISP can abuse them to block access to certain websites for you. So over here in the top left, this is you uh, on your computer, say, and you want to go to a website. Some other people here are, this is going to be your ISP. Now, all connections to the internet are made through your ISP, always. Even if you have a VPN, the initial connection is made through your ISP. That's their job, to give you access to the internet. Okay, so say you want to go to uh, reddit.com, right? So you type that in. But the way internet works is to access a certain website and to connect to their actual servers, you need their numeric address, which is called as IP address. So say this server belongs to Reddit. Uh, they would have an IP. I'm just going to, for example, say it's this. Oh, sorry, it should be dots. OK, so let's say this is their IP. But you're not going to remember that, right? You're going to remember reddit.com. So DNS servers are basically phone books which take the domain name reddit.com and give you the IP address, give your computer the IP address so you can connect to their servers. So I'm going to use a phone book analogy for this. So in this case, the name would be reddit and the phone number would be 12, 13, 14, 15, right? So the diff there are lots of people on the internet or lots of servers who have such phone books of every single website. Some of the popular ones are Google, uh, whose DNS server is 8.8.8.8. .8 and you have Cloudflare, whose server is 1.1.1.1. These are addresses for their phone books. So these guys have their own phone book with all the list of names of websites and the phone numbers. Now, ISPs also sometimes keep such lists. And if your ISP does that and your computer is using your ISP's DNS service, then they can block websites. And this is how. So say in this case you type reddit.com and you're using Google DNS. So what happens is first, uh, you connect to your ISP and say, I want 8.8.8.8. .8 DNS servers are always stored by, in your computer by their IP address. So your ISP routes to the internet and connects you to this server. Then you tell Google that, hey, I want reddit.com. And then Google replies to you through your ISP again. But it's just a direct connection now because your ISP has helped you make it. And it tells you, okay, Reddit's phone number is 12, 13, 14, 50. And now you can use this information. So it says Reddit is 12, 13, 14, 15. And now you know Reddit server's address. So now your computer, again, through your ISP, can connect to reddit.com. So in this case, you're using a third party DNS server or a phone book to get Reddit's phone number. Now, if, you don't, if you're not using a third party DNS and you're using your ISP service, a lot of ISPs just have their own service and it's automatically enabled when they come to so-called set up your router, they'll enforce their own DNS. This is what happens. So you tell the ISP, hey, now this time you don't have to connect to Google, right? They have their own server. Let's say their DNS server is, okay, oh, crap, sorry. So this is their DNS server. So now you say, hey, ISP, I want reddit.com. Now ISPs have their own phone book. Now, anyone can host their own phone book. It depends on if other people use it or not, if that phone book is of any value. So a lot of people use Google's phone book and Cloudflare's. There's some people say that Google stores all your requests so they know what kind of websites you're looking at. Cloudflare emphasizes on privacy, saying that they'll, they'll not store anything, personally identifying, so, so on and so forth. But your ISP, now, they, they're probably not saying anything about their DNS requests because for them, it's, it's a tool which they can easily abuse. So again, as an example, you tell the ISP you want reddit.com. Now say, so here is the phone book for what normal web, for like Google or Cloudflare, where ISP has its own phone book. So they can easily, let me erase this. They have their own phone number, 
So if they want to block Reddit, for example, when you say, hey, I want Reddit, their job is to give you the phone number, right? But they can just give you no response. So they just drop the connection. And then you never know what Reddit's phone number is. So you can never actually connect to their server because you don't have their phone number. Or another thing they can do is give you the wrong phone number. So let's say they give you the phone number, right? They give you this phone number. This is what your ISP is giving you. This could be some other server, right? Uh, which belongs to the ISP and it shows a page saying, this website is blocked. And then the server would be same as this. The address, I mean. So this way, if if when when you say I want Reddit.com, they do reply to you, right? They do reply, but they say they give you the wrong address. They say, hey, Reddit is 65.43.32.13. So you think, okay, this is, your computer doesn't know if it's right or wrong instantly. So your computer will use your ISP and connect to this server but then they see this page. So this is how ISPs who have their own DNS and if you're using their DNS can abuse this power in their phone book to give you the wrong phone number or, or just not give you the phone number and thereby block websites. Uh, theoretically, if you knew, if you remembered that, hey, I remember I used my friend's computer and I know Reddit is 12.13.14.15 you could open their page if they're not doing any other kind of blocking, but we'll get into that later. So this is just a very simple overview of how DNS blocking works, completely noobed down. Uh, and I'll try and go into more technical details, including DNS requests, packets, and actually seeing the packets transmitted in a future video.